What's going on, everybody? Andrew Thompson here, the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel. My guest today is an individual who I've been keeping up with for quite some time. He has been a fixture on the independent wrestling scene for so long, man. Uh, I'm glad he actually took the time to do this with me. This is Fred. Yeah, hi, Fred. How you doing today, man? Man, I'm good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And, you know, as I just mentioned, man, you've been a fixture on the independent scene for quite some time. You've been in the business for close to a decade, right? Uh, eight years. Eight years. I mean, if you want to count, if you want to count this year with the, I mean, ain't nothing really happened, you know, but mm -hmm. eight years technically. So, so, yeah. so, so if you give me like a, a, a summary of, you know, your, your journey thus far, like not, not really a summary of your journey, but like, what have you learned about yourself as an individual, like throughout your years in professional wrestling thus far? I mean, I mean, I've always been a sponge, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I always, you know, every, booking every situation uh every training session you know whatever I'm, I'm always you know looking to just learn and, and and just and just take in and grow you know um so yeah i've been very fortunate to you know have trained under some uh you know just really good i mean not not just good trainers but good people in general uh you know met a lot of good people along the way and you know again i just i just take in man i just take <laughs> in um but I've always been really coachable. So, you know, I, I wrestled, you know, through high school and I also wrestled collegiately. So, uh, you know, so that really uh, helped a lot, you know, you know, uh, transition over to the pro wrestling because, I mean, that's how you, I mean, it is how you advance and, you know, get further, you know, um, you know just being coachable and being a, being a listener and, and, and uh, but more importantly, applying what you, applying what you learn. So um, that's really helped me out a lot. So if that answers the question. So. And, 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 you know, I, I'd be remiss not to mention, you know, of course, you know, with that throughout your years in the business, you know, uh, mentioned Evolve, you know, and, and, Evolve, and the news recently came out that Evolve was acquired by WWE. And, you know, it won't be long before, like, all of the, most of the Evolve shows, if not all, are up on the WWE Network. Uh, just just any fond memories, man. Like, I know you had plenty of great times in Evolve. Like, just anything that you, you know, you're willing to share or, you know, road stories or anything just, you know, from your time there. I mean, uh, you know, I worked for Evolve from 2016 to 2018, uh, mm. early 2018. It's mm. I don't know. It's it, it's it's funny. Like a, a lot of people, I, I don't know. They they still think I work for Evolve. I haven't been there right. like years. <laughs> crazy. I don't know how to get it. It's like, hey, hey, don't you, don't you do Evolve? Like, oh, I do more. I do a whole lot more than Evolve. You know. Mm. But uh, you right. know, that's what really stands out to them, which is which is a good thing. Um, I mean, Evolve was a very it was a very uh, fun environment to work. You know, I had the pleasure of, and it's like, as I mentioned, uh, you know, earlier, um, you know, just being a sponge. Uh, I had the pleasure of working, uh, working with some, you know, with guys who had been in the business 15 years, man. Like, you know, just learning from guys such as uh, Chris Hero and, and TJP, Gulak, uh, Sabre, man. I mean, that's just to name a few. So it was very cool. And that was very, um, yeah, it had a really good, re really good, uh, influence on you know just you know my development you know as a performer um yeah so you know it was it was a really it was a really cool uh it's just a big giant learning tree mm. for me especially at, at, at that stage of my career you know a lot of things I just didn't know and um and, and from watching those guys and working with those guys you know I learned a whole lot and I was able to apply it later I'm still applying it now so it's great it was great uh I, I feel like a lot of people really do associate with associate you like with Evolve. Like I, I, I think that's like a common, a real common thing. And I also think that kind of comes from a uh, what was what was that what was that show? Uh, the Wrestlers, when when they had that whole feature on the like, and, and you know you were a part of that. And I think that's kind of like that connection with people that you were like this like long standing like you know <laughs> you you've been with Evolve. So, like people, I, I think people think that you've been with Evolve since like it like you know it was birth. Like, you know what I mean? And, and but what, one thing I did, you know, of course, while on the topic of Evolve, I know you just broke down the whole thing. But I think one thing that, uh, well, one match specifically that I specifically remember was when you wrestled uh, Walter at Evolve 90, I believe. Like, what? so when you approach a match like that with, with Walter, who's a, Walter's a big dude, like very, like, and, and, but, but you guys' styles are like kind of similar when, as, as far as like you guys keep it on the mat and, you know, you guys are like real good technical wrestlers. Like, like when you approach a match like that, is it like, you know, more so of, you know, 
you 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 want to play the you know the, the the traditional big small thing or is it like more so of a thing like where you just you know you and Walter just go out there and just you know show who's the better you know the better talent you know in the ring? Um, man, it's crazy. Like, uh, man, honestly, like when I go back and I watch older matches, even like with my Evolve matches, like mm. uh, there there were matches that you know that, you know fortunately you got got a lot of attention and you know people remember them, man, but. And when I go back and watch them, it's just like it's like an eyesore for me because like I've learned so much. <laughs> I learned so much more since then. Like I'm just a totally different. Um, I'm a totally different performer now at this point. Um, and when I but when I look back at that match in particular, like what I see is like, you know, I was rolling with the whole big trouble deal. Um, mm-hmm. But still, just as a performer, I didn't really I didn't really know exactly you know who I was as a performer. I was still in that phase where like I was still uh experimenting with different things. Let me well let me see if this works. Let me see if that works. And it was just a very uh you know you know those few years was a very you know just interesting time just as far as like developing and and, and a lot of trial and error. Um now at this point, you know, if I were put in a you know any big match situation, not just if it was Walter, but um, or even, even we could, if I could go back and do that match again, just knowing what I know now and just where I am now, you know, I'd approach it a lot more uh, confidently, if anything, because, like, I have a much, much better sense of who Fred Yehai is as a performer. Like, I know what I do. I know what I do really, really well. And, you know, I would stick to that. So, um, but, yeah, but just in general, like, um, my approach to every match is, you know, and I'm pretty chilled. Like I do everything mm-hmm. I need to do before him. <laughs> like, you know, like I'm I'm up at four in the morning, I go, I, I you know, I'm working out early in the morning. I ride my bike to the gym. I ride my bike to the gym and and I freaking work out. And you know, then later I do jujitsu and I'll get in, I'll I'll get, I'll get some kickboxing in and I'm always, you know, I'm studying. If I'm not studying, you know, I'm thinking about wrestling, you know, so like I'm really sharpening my mind. You know, even while I'm not watching wrestling, like I'm thinking about wrestling. So like the preparation is there. So when it comes, when it comes to showtime, regardless who it is, even if I'm aware that it's a big match situation, like I'm cool. I'm straight. Like I already know I've, I've done all the preparation. So, you know, I'm just there just to have a really good time. I'm there to have a good time. I treat, I treat these matches. Like, I mean, they're, they're social events. You know, I like to interact with everybody, have a good time in the back. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my, that's my whole approach. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm there to have a good time and, and apply the things that I know and, and, and just, you know, have fun being the savage way. So. <laughs> and uh, com- coming up, I say I would say about two days, two days or so from now, I'm, I'm supposed to be uh, interviewing your former tag team partner, Mr. Tracy Williams. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and any special words for Tracy that I can uh, pass along to him from? from oh, man, Tracy's a beast, man. Like, I love Tracy. I love <laughs> Tracy, man. Like, he, he's, he's the toughest vegan I know. <laughs> so he, 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 he me, I know, so I don't know. But yeah, but he, yeah, yeah. He, he was always like, uh, had some very like physical matches with him. It was always a pleasure. Like whether I was, you know, teaming in, you know, teaming up with Tracy, or you know, out rolling around with Tracy. Like you know, it was a very, very, very good memories. Very good memories. And, and you know, um, the, you know, within the midst of all this right now, the COVID nineteen pandemic, I, I, I feel like the independent scene is starting kind of. It, it, it's, it's starting to pick back up a little bit. Like we're starting to see shows like GCW starting to pick back up. I'm seeing a bunch of other shows like you know, streaming on IWTV starting to, you know, every, everybody's kind of starting to, you know, trying to slowly transition into back. No, not, I don't think it's ever going to be back to, you know, what it was previously with, you know, until like later 2021. But just for right now, I think a lot of promotions are already making those strides to, you know, get back up and running. Uh, just, just, how, how do you think some of these promotions have handled the situation? And I know you, did, I, I'm, I, so I'm, if, I'm, if I'm correct, you did wrestle like a month ago. You did like a 60 minute Iron Man match. <laughs> Mr. Savage Weight, <laughs> 60 minute Iron Man match. I was like, okay, okay, 60 minutes. I was like, but that, that's cool though. But like, just, just how do you think, and you know, from somebody that's wrestled during the pandemic, like, you know, how do you think promotions are, you know, handling the situation? I mean, you know, they just have to do what they can. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just have to be careful and, it's got to be safe. Um, you know, we know that you know, can't allow but so many people in. And then, um, you know, they have to take, this, they have to take the, you know, is, is be careful with, you know, how everyone, you know, I know they want everyone in masks. That's what I've heard through the grapevine. I haven't wrestled. I haven't wrestled. I haven't had a match since the 60-minute uh, Ironman, mm. you know. Um, but from what I've heard, like, 
You know, they want to keep everyone in masks while they're indoors. Um, so then, I mean, you just have to just be careful. I believe that the promotions who are running right now, you know, they're doing the best that they can. They're doing, they're taking every safety precaution that, you know, that they can think, they, they can think of. So, but it's cool. You know, something's better than nothing. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're you know, doing what they need to do. So. And one of the main topics, like, I really, really want to talk to you about was, like, just over the past several months or so, man, it's been, like, just a massive surge of just, like, Black wrestlers just, like, no, no, no longer like waiting in the background for like opportunities and like not waiting for anybody to make the call or you know is people just taking opportunities like I'm saying people like Trisha Dora, O'Shea Edwards, uh, Darius Lockhart like man it's, it's like and, and I, I know I'm forgetting like just a, a Faye Jackson like I'm, I'm I know I'm forgetting so many people right now but like it's just a, just a mass amount of talented black wrestlers like like just just from, just from your experience you know as a black man just tell me like. Like what, what? What is it about the professional wrestling business that's like you know, and, and, and you know I, I don't want to you you know I just feel like it's kind of like deeply rooted with like within how the wrestling business started. That's just for my just my thought process about it, and like it's just crazy to see how many talented black wrestlers there are out there, and people just like like these people like yeah like these people don't exist. It's like it's it's so many man that can be used on these national nationally televised shows. And I'm like, just how are you not scooping these people up? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's something. You know, I read the, uh, I read Luthez's book like five times, man. Uh, the Hooker, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Hooker. Yeah, so I read that like five times, man. And it's, you know, it's 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 deep in the roots. It is what it yeah. is. Like uh, professional wrestling here in the U.S., it's it's white dominated. It's it's white ran. Um, and then, of course, you know, in Japan, Japan they have their thing, and in Mexico they have their thing. And, you know, for the longest time, uh, like being a, being a black performer, you know, we were seen as, you know, as the minority. Um, and in my opinion, we were even a minority, even if there was a Japanese work on that show or whatever, even, you know, you bring in the Mexican talent, you know, the blacks were always the foreigner. And the reason being is because the Japanese, they have their own. The, you know, the, you know Mexico, you know, they have their own. They have three, ma- three, two or three major companies, if I'm not mistaken, in Mexico and Japan. Yeah, right. have like, what, five, six, maybe seven, you know, in theirs. And here in the U.S., like, everything is pretty much, you know, the major companies are all, like, white-owned. Problem is, Black performers, we're always trying to, we're striving to uh, make a name for ourselves on these other platforms that are not owned or, or dominated by us. And, you know, because of that, only a percentage of us uh, really get those opportunities. And even smaller percentage of us uh, reach, like, you know, a, a, a certain level of, of like, a, a higher success. You like know, that, like that superstardom type. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and um, it, it kind of sucks because, like, it puts us in a situation where we have to compete against ourselves. Which I see it a lot where it's a shame where um, you don't really, you don't really hear or you don't really hear about, well, who is the best Japanese talent? Who is the best Mexican talent? You don't really hear that. You hear that about the black talent because we don't have, we don't have something for ourselves. Um, I put up a post on, on Twitter about a week ago and I just want to clarify on it. Like, you know, I'm not at all pushing for a segregation like we black performers we have to be liberated from that whole system and we need to design a system for ourselves where we create our own stars we create black stars and we don't depend on these major companies to do that for us Mm. so you know that's very important I, i believe that's the change that needs to take place and i believe that you know there are uh several other uh black wrestlers like myself who are uh, taking those actions and who are taking that approach. And, you know, we're not just waiting for opportunities. We have to build something for ourselves. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, will we see, we, we reap all the benefits in this generation? Well, I mean, who knows, but, you know, we could be very well uh, blazing that trail for, you know, the next generation of, of black wrestlers that are coming up. But I think that's a pretty important, it's, it's, just, it's so, it's so important that we actually, I'm glad that we've, that, that every, that more and more of us are like waking up to that. Um, Cause again, it'd be, it'd be so phenomenal to see, uh, you know, uh, 20 
black owned wrestling territories running <laughs> here in the US or whatnot. And then you know, and then, you know, from there like venturing overseas or what what have you. But that's that I mean that's the thing. We need that. We really do. We really do need that. There's too many, too many, <laughs> too many of us who are just so talented. And <laughs> it's be a shame just to, you know, waste all of that talent trying to get onto someone else's thing. No, build our own. We need to build right. our own at this point. It's important. Like it's it's kind of crazy you say that because like I kind of compare that to me kind of like jumping into the media portion of wrestling. Like I remember the first time I went to go do like a big media. I think I, it was Starcast back in uh, Vegas in 2019, and I remember dude I walked in there man and I was like, like I I really wasn't paying attention to it, but I, that was like the first thing I noticed. I was like probably maybe one or two black media members, or I should say people of color in there because I don't I don't I don't think the other person was was black, but like, it was just crazy to me. Like I was surrounded by a whole bunch of white dudes and I'm the only black person in there. You know what I'm saying? I was like, it, it, it was just crazy to me. Like, and that, that was kind of like a real big, big thing for me. Like an inner, inner thing. Like I went like bragging about it, but it was just like something that was like, you know, like, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm here type, type thing. And that to, not even to the approval or uh, of them, it was just like a me type thing. Like I'm a black man in this, wrestling media space and I'm like like I'm here you know what I'm saying like and and I know the the the, the content level that I produce and you know what I'm saying it, it was just like a real, real real crazy thing for me but like another thing I, I was um listening to uh Rocky it was a Rocky Johnson interview that he did before he passed away it was I, it was late 2019 that he did this interview and man he was talking about like some of the stuff that like he was like that like he had to endure like you know back in the day in black titles like he was like you know uh, there, there was one time when you know uh, the promoters they they would like ask black wrestlers like come to the ring like with watermelon and like you know chicken and you know just stuff like that and he was like they they would have to do it because if you didn't do it you don't get booked like you know what I'm saying like you you don't do it you don't get booked and he I'm, it was one thing that really stood out to me during that interview he said that um, Ole Anderson like was probably like one of the most racist people that he had ever met like in wrestling. And it's crazy to me because, like, even now I see people, like, praise Ole Anderson. And I'm not expecting everybody to know Ole Anderson's history. You know what I'm saying? I'm not expecting everybody to be like, oh, they, they, they know who he was as an individual. But, like, just, just hearing Rocky Johnson say that, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, he ain't got no reason to laugh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was, he said that he was, like, one of the most racist people that he ever met. And just knowing that, how, how much praise he gets in professional wrestling for being a, a part of the Four Horsemen, like, it was, it was just, like, like it, j just hearing that from somebody of his stature and like knowing what the, the work that he put in for African American performance and rest, like it was just like just crazy to me. Like I just wanted to get your thoughts about like you know, you know sharing that information and like it's kind of crazy because and it, it kind of comparing that because I recently um interviewed Calvin Tanklin and he was telling me like when he first started in wrestling like somebody kind of said something similar to him and like the fan tried to like pass it off as like oh you know we just like fans type stuff and I'm like. You, you you can literally say anything, 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 but you choose to, like, go that route. You, you feel what I'm saying? Right. I mean, you know, my thoughts on it is this, like, uh, it just comes to a point of, of just, um, how can I put this? As far as, as, as my view pertains to, you know, the professional wrestling business when it comes mm -hmm. to, like, uh, racism, like, I mean, it is what it is. Like, like it is what it is, honestly. Like, um, we know that uh, you know uh, most of you know, the major companies here, for the most part, they're they're all white owned. But that's why, uh, and you know, uh, as far as the racism, like that's not our fault. That's 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 not all our. Right. Fault. Like, you know, we're out. Uh, right. You know, we're out trying to. Uh, you know, we're doing what we love, and we're out trying to make money, and uh, you know, just you know, just you know, reach a certain level of success. Like you know, businessmen. You know, so. But just because it's not our fault, we don't have to just stay victim of that. That's why we need to, uh, okay, accept it, see it for what it is. All right, and now we need to start making our own stuff and change that whole narrative and, you know, create our own stars. Because, you know, as long as we leave it up to, you know, you know, you know that kind of situation, then, you know, hey, we'll just continue to fall victim to that. But now it's just time to uh, liberate ourselves from, you know, liberate ourselves from that whole deal and, is make our own thing mm -hmm. like that's what it's gonna that's what it's gonna boil down to you know i wish i really 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 wish that 
pro wrestling was a lot like basketball where Man, um, oh my you know, goodness um in I, the sense yeah, where you know, you. yeah in the sense where um the only thing that really matters is your talent you know your your impact on the game that's what really matters with the nba although it is white owned um like it doesn't matter I mean, if, if you're freaking LeBron James, if you're Kawhi Leonard, you're Kawhi Leonard. If you're Luka Doncic, then you're, hey, hey, dude, you can ball. Like, <laughs> you know I mean, dude, you, you can ball. We're going to give you, we're going to give you press. We're going to give you, we're going to give you media time. Like, I really wish it were like that. But the truth is, is that it's not. It's not. And perhaps, you know, by us creating our own thing, perhaps we can, perhaps we can change that. Perhaps so. Perhaps so. So, Yeah. I, I think I think it really sucks. Like I've been on a few cards where um where where a uh, promoter may have bought in, you know, a couple of Japanese talent, and then there'd be a couple of black talent, and you know, but the Japanese, you know, they have this they have this reputation where you know they don't have to be the biggest Japanese stars. They can even be Japanese young boys, and they bring them in, and they're treated like such a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like they're treated like a big deal, and they're automatically pushed in the you know pushed the, you know the show still spot in the main event and then you may have a couple of black wrestlers and then you know because we don't have our own thing and we're depending on them to help us advance uh let's put him in a you know they put him in a scramble let's put him in just another match and he just has to go out and just make do with whatever we give him you know mm -hmm. but again we got to change that we got to get our own stuff period yeah. That, that, that's honestly not even the first time I, even, I, I ever heard that. I have heard countless wrestlers say that they've like experienced that kind of like, you know, that I, I, I'll refer to it as indirect racism. That's what I, I that, that's that, that exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it that. Like, and like, it, it's just crazy to me. Like, and we mentioned it earlier, like, man, there's so many talented black wrestlers and the, like, they're just like <laughs> sitting on the independent scene and like, how did like, and like, it, it's crazy to me seeing like, and, and, and you know, I'm not trying to disrespect no, you know, no other wrestlers, but like, it, it's just crazy to me seeing so many other non-people of color get signed, man, like just get signed and signed and signed. And then you got these, these like amazing performers that you could just slot into any position and like, you just like bypass them. Like it, it, it ah, that's, a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole other thing, man. But like, uh, what, real quick, did you, um, I, I know you had some, I know you were going to be on uh, Josh Barnett's blood sport for mania weekend am i am i correct in that uh i wasn't booked on that no i wasn't i wasn't booked on that show i've never um i don't think he and i ever even had a conversation um, okay no, I, I, I don't i don't think i was booked for him you should okay so i know because i had read some i must have misread it and i had to but i read some I, I saw your name under the the blood sport thing but i think it, i think it might have been an article with people suggested names that they might have wanted to oh. see in blood yeah that, that's that's probably why i got confused and I, I would like to see you in blood sport but i think that'd be that'd be that'd cool be as hell great. i i i i can see you getting getting, getting physical in, in there for sure but uh did you did you have any uh any stuff lined up for for mania weekend or were you yeah, planning I, to head down to tampa i did i did i i had i had a few uh big matches i um I had a big match with dan mccabe the rematch from last mm. year i had a match with john gresham uh there was would that have been nice that would have been sweet what else I have? it was a little fuzzy i think uh there was another show that contacted me but i didn't get all the details like that you know everything got shut down everything yeah. got everything got shut down but you know it's what it is i think there was still a opportunity within it as well you know sometimes you know um as 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 sucky as it was like have to take that and take the ill and and run with it, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, run with it, man. But it's you know, it was what it was. But hey. yeah, you, you you mentioned uh, Daniel Macabe too. So I know he's been like a fixture in WXW over in Germany. I know you you wrestled in in, in WXW quite a few times. Like, what what, what was that like, man? Because I know the fans over there are just like like rabid wrestling fans, like real into it. Like, just just tell me about your experience in Germany. Like, did you have like a, you know, like a, uh, like a bit of a culture shock type thing when you first, when you first went over there the first time, or was it just, you know, everything was smooth? I mean, the food was great. <laughs> <laughs> the food was great. But it was, you know, it was, it was, um, I really enjoyed myself there. Um, I'd never been in a situation uh, or, or in a, how can I put it? Um, I mean, I guess I just call it a situation, but you know, uh 
you know, there wasn't really many English speaking people, I mean, at least in the area that I was in. So it was very different um, just being around, being the, being the, I mean, I'm a minority here, but being like the minority where we don't speak the same language. So it really made me appreciate um, just having like regular, random uh, social interactions with people, maybe really appreciate that. And um, while I was there, like I really picked up, I never really enjoyed reading like that. Mm -hmm. But while I was there, I read like eight books. So like I really picked up reading and I still continue to read to this day. Um, but the whole experience there, like it was, it was pretty cool. Like, I mean, life was really simple. Um, like I'll wake up, go down first thing in the morning, train, come up, eat, you know, I go, uh, Chris Wolf was on, was on tour as well. So it was, um, coast to coast. So like we would oftentimes we link up, go down to downtown Essen or wherever else is going, you know, sightsee, do whatever, clown around a little bit. We get back in time, you know, I train some more, eat you know, stay up, read something, kind of fraternize, go to sleep, do the same thing all over again. Then on the weekends, we had our shows. So like, you know, it was a really good experience. And I'll also mention, I'll also mention this too. Um, it's as I mentioned uh, earlier, like with, you know, with Evolve, some of the things that I learned there. Um, that year, early that year, I didn't re-sign with, with Evolve. So I broke away and I was just kind of, you know, just out, just uh, looking to make things work myself and just, you know, just trying to learn what I could. And, you know, I, I learned a lot on that tour. Um, mm -hmm. Not really anything that people, like anyone else, like really taught me, but things started to just kind of click more while I was there. Like, wow, I didn't realize that I could, I could actually do that. Well, I, you know, I could do this, I can do that. And, hey, you know, this is something I can actually apply. Um, it was just like the most random things in matches and it just started to click. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so the tour really did me a lot of, did me a lot of good, man. Um, just, you know, being in that environment. Uh, yeah, man. It was great. Like, yeah, <laughs> that, food, that food was so good, man. Like I was forced to wrestle a match with a full stomach, man. Like, oh. yeah, yeah, man. It was it was crazy, but it turned out okay. It turned out fine. <laughs> and say the people watching this, y'all, y'all might be saying a lot of Fred Ye Fred Ye had content on the WWE Network, man. They you know they got involved. This you know is. I don't think it's too out of the question. I think WXW is going to end up on the network too. There's been some stuff out there, so y'all might go go to the WWE Network get get, get caught up on your Fred Yeah high matches, man. Yeah, man, but it's bad. all outdated material. That ain't <laughs> anymore. Like that's the yeah, that, that, that's, that's the thing. Anymore. That's the thing. Like, people yeah. still say you're in big trouble. Like, I don't say that no more. Like, <laughs> hey, yeah, I still get deal. You're in big trouble. Like wait, I. I don't say that no more. Like, what's up with that? Like, I'm the savage weight. Hey, come on. There it is. There yeah. it is. But, but you, you also did some work with uh, Major League Wrestling for, for, I think you did a string of matches with them. Uh, I, like, I, I know they, like, they've recently been, you know, announcing, like, a lot of signings. Like, did they ever try to, you know, scoop you up? Like, was that ever a question, or was it just, like, a per show type type deal? Oh, uh, I don't know. I was a, I don't know. Like, uh, let me first say, I mean, I, I, I I enjoyed myself there, but I didn't quite understand. Uh, I mean, this is, I mean, this is my experience. Like I, mm -hmm. I didn't quite understand, you know, what was really going on or what was really going to be like asked of me. Like I know they expressed certain ideas, and then uh, I ended up going on the tour to Germany. And then when I came back, it's like everything like kind of changed up. Like all this stuff happened, and I'm like, wait, what? You know, what am I doing? Like, you know, what's going on? So it was more so like that. That was my experience with uh, with with MLW. Uh, something about a contract was mentioned to me, um, but you know nothing was ever nothing was ever like further discussed. And honestly, I was in the mindset of I didn't want to sign with anyone. I just came out of a two-year deal with Evolve, and uh, oh, right, right. I didn't want to sign with the. You know, I, I didn't really want to sign with another company at that point. Like I wanted to kind of just like freelance and just get around and just keep learning and keep growing anyway. But. I mean, that was my experience. Like, I had a good time working with Tom Lawler and Simon Gotch. Like, shout out to them. Um, like, you know, got to just, you know, just interact with people, man. Like, you know, I had a, had a really good time, you know, linking up with Jason K, man, and <laughs> playing, you know, getting on the PS4 or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, you know, had a really good, you know, had a good time. But right. as far as that, I, I didn't even know what they were trying to do. Like, I didn't just – it is what it is. It so. is. I, I was about to say that before you said. I was like, it is what it is at this point, yeah, right? But like, <laughs> but 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 just as far as like, what's next? Like, would you ever be interested in you know heading to Japan? Like, 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I think a lot of people would agree, you know, Fred Yehai versus Hiromu Takahashi and Best of the Super Juniors don't sound too bad, man. That don't sound too shabby to me. As great as that sounds, like, uh, man, like, you know, like, as you, as you live and, and just, uh, you know, you have your experiences and, you know, you learn and you grow, like, uh, yeah, going to Japan would be great. But honestly, like, just where my heart is right now is I just want to see us start our own thing. Like, I want to link up with other Black wrestlers and, like, you know, we focus on starting our own thing. Uh, yes, like, yes, I would be open to, you know, doing that if that came up. But, you know, where my heart is, like, mm-hmm. we need to start doing our own thing. Like, that's just that's just what it is. We need to really start building that. It's not really about money or, or contract or or, you know, uh, my reputation or how I'm perceived, I think this is more important. This is really more important. We need to build our own stars. There are too many of us, again, that are just – Too many. That, that, that are uh, either not getting opportunities or we're just not getting them soon enough. And um, we just can't depend on getting on other people's platforms. We need to start building our own platforms. So that's where my heart is. Um mm-hmm. At, you know, at one point, like I did, like I, I did want to do all those things, but now it's just, now it's different, man. It's just, yeah, you know, no, I, I completely, and I, you know, especially, you know, with what has gone on over the past couple of months, you know, with the, with the death of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and like, you know, seeing all these countless other, other murders of, of black people in America like that have just, like, even I remember when uh, the Amar, Amar Arbery uh, shooting happened, like, I, I, when you I, mean, I initially found out that that happened in February and we were just hearing about that like in what like May yeah. I was like you know what I'm saying like how, how, how does that like not get covered until three months later and it took longer than that a couple of months after that even to get, get justice for this man I don't even think like the rightful justice has even been served for this man that got killed in, in February like you know what I'm saying like and I, I completely understand your mindset as far as like you know like I'm pretty sure like if some if some of that stuff came up, you know, even with, with Japan or anywhere, like it would just be like, you know, yeah, that's cool. I appreciate that, but like your main thing is like, I'm trying to get my people together. I want to rally my people and you know build this, you know, essentially an empire for Black wrestlers. I I think that would be cool as hell. Like, and I think that would be something that would be like, you know, very very critical to to you know to to a, to a lot of performers out there. But but just on the topic of you know. I, I did want to ask you. I know you were going to be a part of uh, Ring of Honor's Pure Title Tourney, and I know they announced you for that. I think I think that was going to be a real cool opportunity. You know, getting to mix it up with John Gresham again, uh, Eugene Nagata. Uh, you know, how, how did that all? You know, how did that all come about? That you know they contacted you and you know all that stuff before the pandemic. You know, came and ruined everything. I mean, like initially, like you know, I was I was uh, contacted for it, and um, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, that, yeah, that's cool. I'll go ahead and you know run with it and. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the extent of it. And, you know, all this happened, just threw it all off. Um, right. so, yeah, so, I mean, if something else happens with, comes up with Ring of Honor, then, you know, cool. You know, you know that's really, really cool. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're a great company. They have great talent. John Gresham, as you mentioned, like, I consider him one of the and best Jay wrestlers Le- in the world right now. Jay, Jay Lethal was going to be in it, too. Yeah. Oh, he was going to be in it. Oh, I didn't know mm-hmm. that. I didn't yeah, know that. he was going to be in it, too. Yeah, that, that, that was gonna be cool and I, I know that one of the first you know kind of tournament that you were going to be a part of I know back in 2016 you know I think you had uh, the, the the cruiserweight classic uh tournament like get in match I guess that's how, how I would describe it like the, like the, the, I always wanted to know like in terms of how the uh the like so I know there was quite a few of all talents in there that, that, that had like qualifying matches like did, did WWE decide who got into that tournament was that evolve who was making the you know this person should be in it this person should be in it type thing because i always was curious how that you know how all that you know came about i didn't really know all of the ins and outs but you mm-hmm. know but like i mean it, it would only make sense if wwe decided who was going to be you know in the tournament because it was their product mm-hmm. um so i mean at the end of the day it is a business and they know who they want to you know who, who they like to showcase and i mean looking back on it like TJP was the more established wrestler between, I'm speaking to, you know, as far as our, our deal, mm-hmm. like, so wrestling TJP for the qualifying match, like he was the more established, uh, the more well-known and honestly, he was the more polished. 
So, mm-hmm. yeah, of course, it would make sense for him to be a part of the, you know, of the Cruiserweight Classic. Not saying that I didn't deserve it. or no, nah, 100%. Part I know what you're saying. It, but he was definitely right. the more polished. So, like, of course. So, you know, I, you know, it's safe to say that they decided who was going to, you know, take part in it. Huh? Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> now, 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 on the last thing right here, uh, you know, just, just just to have some fun, right? So we got let's, let's, take, let's take a look at the the history of Catchpoint as far as the, the the members in the group. We got Drew Gulak in WWE, Matt Riddle in WWE, Tracy Williams in Ring of Honor, Mr. Malcolm Bivens <laughs> in in NXT right now taking over. Mr. Malcolm Bibbs. I, I, I was so glad to see Stokely doing good, man. He's yeah. like one of the one of the funniest dudes. Like I, I heard nothing but good things about him. Who else we got? Yeah, we got we got TJP on the Independence, and he was in WWE. Look, man, it, 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 it's, it's looking like Catchpoint is just ta- is just taking over NXT slash WWE. You know, I, I, I look. I, I know we we just had the whole discussion about you know, and I'm all with you know. You know, building up our own, and and, and I'm I'm with all that. But like, just 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 for conversation's sake, would 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 you be interested in possibly rejoining? You know, some some of your former catch catch point stable mates, because like it, it just seems like everybody that like not everybody, but most of you guys that were in that stable eventually went to WWE. Besides Tracy Williams, and I'm I'm pretty sure that was just the decision that he made not to go. You know what I'm saying? So like, it, 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 I think it would be cool, you know, if, if all you were in the same company. And I, I, I want to see you beat up uh, Stokely Hathaway, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, my thoughts on it is, is this, like, you know, we're all in, obviously, we're all in, dis- in different places. Um, and, uh, you know, I can speak on my story. Uh, I think it's very interesting that – actually, I saw, a, I saw an old uh, Evolve card. Someone said – I haven't really been – that um but someone sent me so hey man what do you think of this and uh on this card it had basically everyone on this card went on to get signed to like you know major deals whether it was wwe aew or going off to new japan and it's like i was on the cards like i'm the only one that didn't get i'm the only one that didn't get that shot and i think that's pretty interesting uh and i think it's actually it's pretty cool um and and that's just my story like you know that's just my story um I didn't, you know, I've always, you know, made it a point to treat everyone with respect and, and you know, just be a professional. And, uh, you know, um, you know, I've accepted that, hey, may pos- you know, possibly none of that stuff was meant to be in the deck of cards for, you know, you know, for Fred Yeha, you know, perhaps that was the case. Perhaps that's the case, you know, you know, you know, just for the next couple of years. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, any, anything can happen, man. You know, anything any, can happen. Yeah. You know, we don't really know, but I know where my heart is now. Um, but, you know, but that's just what was, you know, you know, you know, that's just my story. That's my story. I can't really explain uh, why it's happened that way and why, you know, why it is what it is right now at this point. But um, yeah, but as far as like catch point uh, reuniting, um, <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be, a, I mean, I, I, I can see that's a really, you know, cool thing. Um, would I be interested in it? I'm kind of 50 50 on it. Like, mm-hmm. You know, again, we're all in, we're all just in, uh, going on different points in our careers right now. And, um, you know, I, I will have to make that decision of, uh, hey, you know, would that be best for me or, you know, I have to make that decision. But, you know, again, for now, my, you know, I know where my heart is right now. So. All right. And, 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 and like, okay, so I, I know I literally just said that was the last question, man, but like, I, so I, I, got, I got to ask you this, right? So I, I, I and, and just me, being a fan, you know, I've always paid attention to your work specifically. Like I've always been a big fan. Like I, I even, I, I remember when I, I, I think it was a year ago, I like, looked on your Twitter and I was trying to find like an email address or something. I was like, I got to try to interview Fred. Yeah, yeah. I got to try to get in contact with this dude. I got stuff to interview. And then somebody I just came across your email. I was like, you know what? Let me, let me try to set this interview. So I got to ask you this. Cause I feel like you really are one of the more underappreciated wrestlers out there for, for what, for what you've done thus far in the style that you wrestle and, and, and the uniqueness that you bring to professional wrestling. And I feel like you don't really get the, the kind of, and I'm not trying to, you know, do the whole, um, you know, the, the, the deserve type thing, but like, do, do you kind of ever get the feeling that you don't get not necessarily get the credit or the praise for the work that you have put in and for, for, for those gener for the, not, not necessarily generation, but for those people that you may have inspired, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like, 
you along with, you know, and, 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 that, and of course you, you know, you haven't been in, in wrestling as long as, as the, as, you know, like a, a Daniel Brown or something like that. But I feel like you guys have really like inspired another type of, you know, a viewpoint on professional wrestling. Like every wrestler doesn't have to be six, six and, 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 and two fifty and, you know, all, you know, muscles coming out the neck. Like, I feel like you guys have really changed that perception of, you know, what a professional wrestler looks like. You feel what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Mm. Um, uh, uh, to answer that question, like, I, I don't, I don't really care whether I'm appreciated or not. I don't, that, that's never really concerned me like that. Like, like, you know, I know that, I know that for whatever reason, uh, you know, this pro wrestling thing has like, it's, it's been on my heart since the very first time that I watched it. And I was like two years old. I still remember, I still remember my, I, I still, I, I still have memories of like it, it just watching wrestling during that time. And I, I, I don't, I don't really understand why, uh, I, I love it so much and, and, and mm -hmm. why I just, you know, have been so driven, uh, so driven to, to become the best version of myself. Um, so I've, I've never felt just underappreciated. I've never felt that way. I just know that, Hey, I just, I just, I just love to do it. Um, this is the only thing. Uh, and I, and I've been involved in other things. Like I used to, I used to play basketball, man. Like I, I played varsity basketball. Like I wrestled in, in, in high school and I wrestled collegiately D1. And uh, with both those things, as long as it's just with regular work, like, uh, but I remember there were situations where, hey, if I didn't feel well, if I was just too tired, didn't get enough sleep, or if I was sore, or whatever the case may have been, you know, I wasn't really going to perform, you know, my best. Mm -hmm. But with this pro wrestling thing, for whatever reason, you know, and it just comes from inside, perhaps, like, you know, uh, it doesn't matter how I feel, like, I can go off of no sleep, I could not be feeling, the, I cannot be feeling the best I could be super sore but when I step out that curtain that stuff just goes out the window and I can go out and put on a really really good performance you can't you wouldn't be able to tell like mm -hmm. so I I'm not really worried about like whether the people appreciate me or not um and that's just a matter of coming down to to a matter of of acceptance and and, and also like just taking um it's being liberated uh liberate myself from you know you know just you know the whole system and you know wanting to create our own thing um yeah, man. Like, I, I just had a, I just had a brain freeze. I knew what I was gonna say. And it just kind of <laughs> went out. It kind of went out. Uh, what was I gonna? Yeah, I don't. Fred, think. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, what was I gonna say? God, dog. It just, it just, it just went. It, it, I, 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 I hate when that happened. Like when you literally, like you about to say it, and you're like, damn. Like what, what was I just thinking about? It just but, went. Um, dang it, dang it. What was I gonna say? It was gonna be good, man. It was gonna, it was gonna be deep. It was gonna be so deep, man. It was gonna be deep. It just went. I don't like that, man. I don't like that. Oh my goodness. They they, they uh, wanna try the, the, the who whoever's in control wanna try to let you shine, man. They wanna you know, try to let you do your thing. But let late. late, late. What, I said. what was I gonna say, man? Oh my goodness. Okay, bottom line. But you I I I, 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 I feel like you was about to touch on like more so of, you know. But just from what I took from what you were speaking about, I kind of felt like you were kind of heading in the direction of, you know, you're not necessarily wrestling to seek the approval or, or the appreciation of anyone. You kind of do it for the love that you have for right. professional wrestling as a whole. And I kind of, I, 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 I because, yeah. Yeah, I, I do because I mean, it, this is, this is obviously there's purpose in it. It's something that I'm, that I'm meant to do. And I'm determined, I'm, I'm determined to, uh, you know, when my time is up here, like, you know, you know, when I, when I pass on and, you know, I, I'm determined to die on empty. Like it's not, it's, this is not for people's uh, appreciation. Oh, I felt that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm that. like, you know, I know that, you know, I'm going to get the most out of this body and I'm going to get the most out of this gift that, that, you know, that, that God gave me, you know, whether I ever perform it at a certain level or not, like, I mean, it is what it is, but I don't really care about, you know, what, you know, uh, I don't really care about that. I don't get carried away with, you know, you know, people's reviews on matches and, you know, all that, all that kind of, like, I just, I go out there and, you know, I just, I want people to know at the end of the day that when they see Fred Ye High, um, that I'm coming 110% prepared, that you know that I've been putting in the work. And when I step through that curtain, regardless how I feel, I have a standard that I hold myself to. 
and mm -hmm. I'm going to exceed that standard every single time I step through that curtain and in that ring. And by the end of it, like, I'm going to give you the best that I can. And uh, perhaps it's all about, you know, my legacy in that regard. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's what, and that's what's important to me. It's not about money. It's not about a contract. It's not about all the other stuff, you know, whatever reputation, man. I just, I just love to do it. And I feel that this is one of the things that I'm meant to do while I'm able to do it. So. And, and just to echo that, I feel the exact same way about the, the space that I'm in. Just do it for the love of it, man. Like, you know, of course, of course, you know, money, money is a thing, you know, and, and that that's good to have, trust me. Like I ain't complaining about that, not 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 one bit. But like I I I've I do it for the drive and like just that inner feeling of knowing that I'm putting in my best effort and you know what I'm saying? Like that's that that's the thing that drives me, you know, the most with anything. Right. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is like a real big thing for me. Great honor. Uh Fred, you know, before we wrap it up, uh let the people know where they can you know, follow you on social media or, you know, your merchandise store links or anything like that, you know, the floor is yours, plug it, the, uh, everything's going to be in the description below the video. I mean, you can follow me on social media, but I'm not really on it. <laughs> I'm not really on it, honestly, man. You know, you, you got, you got to message me. I'm not, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm not on social media, but I'm not like out of touch, man. Like you can just, you can just hit me up, man. Just, you know, you can shoot me a message, man. You can message me on Facebook. Like I, I do check oh. my, Old school and the young body, man. That's what that's yeah. what it is. That's what it. That's all it is, man. Uh, old school and a young yeah. body. That's all it yeah, is. It's, it's Fred Yeha everything, man. Like it's Facebook, Fred Yeha. You know, Twitter is Fred Yeha, man. Like you know, just hit me up. You know, I got an email address. Like I, I do have a YouTube. <laughs> like I do. I like I, I. I do enjoy doing video editing, uh, BACW wrestling. So I mean, you know, you can check that out, but. Yeah, man, I'm a pretty personable person, man. You can just hit me up, man. It, it is what it is. Fred, but. Fred basically saying, y'all kids and your damn social media, y'all can go. <laughs> <laughs> you go visit and see it, you know. It, it is what it is, man. Like, again, you can just hit me up. <laughs> you can hit me up if you want to talk. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, I gotta, um, I'll be out in St. Louis uh, next Friday. Okay. Um, I got, okay. it, you know, got that they're running a, a cool tournament there uh, is that uh journey pro is that what that is uh this is st louis anarchy st. Louis anarchy but i know they work together so they're kind of they, they seem pretty intertwined you mm -hmm. know um but I'll, I'll i'll be there you know participate in that tournament um and then, yeah man that's that's you know i'm just rocking and rolling man like yeah yeah I may have some jujitsu tournaments coming up, man. Hey, so I'm there we go. At some point. There we I'm go. Tap some folks out, man. Tap some people out. <laughs> yeah. Or I might go. get tapped out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, I need to see if Fred tap in 30 seconds. Wait a minute. What is this? Like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is a real, real big thing for me, man. One of, for sure, like I ain't even trying to say this just to blow smoke because you're right here. For real, one of my, one of my bucket list interviews, man. Like I ain't even like oh, I just I, I just checked one off. Uh, was it B back in April? I got to interview Christian. That was like from WWE. That was like another one for me, and you were definitely another one. Uh, who else? Uh, Amazing Red is another one for me, man. Like so, I definitely got to check that one off. So, you know, I appreciate you taking the time out today to do this. Yeah. Like, Thank really you, appreciate man. it. Thank you, man. Like, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, all, all, all love, man. I'm going to uh, make sure I tag you on Twitter. I don't even know if you got an Instagram, but I'm still putting it up on Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. I have an Instagram. You got Instagram? Instagram? Well, but here's the, okay, here's the catch. So I set it up while I was in Germany. Chris Wolf made me set it up. She's like, mm -hmm. you need an Instagram. And um, she set it up, and I I haven't logged in since. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know my password, man. Damn. I don't know my password. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know my login. Like I don't. I, don't <laughs> I say, but I'm, I'm gonna make sure I put this up on Twitter. I'm gonna tag you. You know, give you the whole works. I, I do a um. I do a written version too. Like I do a video and written. So I'm gonna make sure you know the 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 site tags you in the written version. And I'm gonna you know the, the whole the whole nine. You know, I'm gonna blow it up on social media, man. But like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Andrew Thompson and the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel. This is the Savage Weight himself, Fred Yeha. Also, as he said, you mentioned you can check him out next week in New Orleans, or this week, or next week in St. Louis. Either way, go check him out. That's the man right there. Go buy all of his merchandise. Go follow him on social media so just so he can not follow you back. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm <laughs> Andrew <laughs> And this is Andrew's House of Interviews YouTube channel. We are out. Peace. Peace.